everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking Season 2 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show. I'm going to try to figure out exactly what room this is that these IEL are standing in. Now, if you're a little bit lost, you don't know what we're talking about, don't worry about it. We're going to cover all of that in today's video. I'll tell you where it came from and, and what it means. Uh, and we're going to do what I'd like to do best here on the channel, is speculate with very little to no information at all. It's always a whole lot of fun to do that. So... If you're new to the channel you don't know what we do here, we essentially just cover the Wheel of Time. So if you like the Wheel of Time, if you like fantasy, then this is the place for you. There's nothing too small or too big to cover here on the channel, from rumors to official content to leaks to casting, set video, set pictures, speculation, and I just talk about my general love of the Wheel of Time here. If you like that sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We usually put out a couple of videos per week. And... If you like those videos, make sure you actually do click the like button because believe it or not, it does make a difference in the reach of the videos and a whole lot more people are starting to see my videos because you folks are liking them, uh, which means I may hit my 20K subscriber goal before season two drops. And now that we know season two is dropping this year and, and more specifically this fall if you're in North America, so quarter three, quarter four, for those of you who aren't, um, we, we have a couple of months left to hit 20K. So fingers crossed we'll hit there. Now. Before I get into the actual video, I do have to give a spoiler warning because, let's face it, we're going to be talking about this particular room as well as some elements of Season 2, so... Spoiler warning! In today's video, we're talking about certain elements of Season 2 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show. So, I have to give a very, very deep spoiler warning with this because we're going to be talking about Roydian, the Aiel, the history of the One Power in certain cases, and a lot of it's going to ruin some stuff deep into the books. So unfortunately, I have to give a full book spoiler warning. So if you've not read the entire series of The Wheel of Time, that's books 1 through 14 by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, before warned, I'm going to ruin plot points and character arcs from deep within the series. Also, if you haven't seen Season 1 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show, I'm going to ruin stuff from that as well. You've been warned. All right, so a couple of weeks ago at JordanCon, we got a very special treat. It was a video from the cast and the crew of The Wheel of Time answering Phantom's questions. So JordanCon put that out to the Phantom and said, ask us some questions, and we'll pose them to the production team, and hopefully some of them will be answered. And some of them were, and it was a, a, like, it was really cool. I'm not going to lie to you. There was a whole bunch of really good information in that. I did a whole video on it. It was probably a half hour long trying to explain everything that was going on. Jordan Con actually released a video on their YouTube channel so you can see the questions and answers all there. Really very neat. But there was something that was sort of glossed over just a little bit at the beginning of the video and that wasn't brought up again but the fandom some speculating on and that's uh, that's what is this room? <laughs> So you can see uh, to the Aiel here in this picture in this particular room in this Q&A video You had Rafe Judkins on set in this room Sarah Nakamura on set in this room and they introduced Bane and Chiat played by uh, Ragnar Ragnars and Maya Simonson and reintroduced Avienda played by Eul Smart in this particular room on set as well Now I don't think any of this was a mistake I think it was there on purpose to cause us to speculate and talk about it and they did a really good job in that Because a lot of the fandoms just been a buzz about what this possibly could be now, Rafe did give us a couple of hints. He said this particular set that they were standing on um, featured a lot of blood, a lot of water, a lot of costume changes, a lot more costume changes, and it was pretty big and epic, and it uh, features very heavily in Season 2 and again in Season 3. So that gave us some clues, and we're going to go through what he said, as well as try to take a look at some of the stuff in the background here and piece together what this room could possibly be. Uh, and like I said in the intro... It's my favorite part of running this channel is taking very little information and trying to figure out what something is and usually being totally wrong or maybe right a little bit. But I'm not often totally right. But we're going to talk about it today and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So um, other than being absolutely gorgeous, this room seemed to have some stuff in the background. Now, there are three prevailing theories in the fandom right now. Uh, the first one is that this is Roydian. The second one is this is the Stone Tear. And the third one is, is this is the chamber that the Accepted take their test in. Um, I'm leaning towards the third, but we're going to talk about all three in today's video. So we're going to start off by looking at some of the background shots in this particular chamber, uh, try to speculate what some of that stuff is there, how it could fit into the show. I'll compare it to some other things that we've already seen in the show, which might give us a little bit more um, idea of what could be back here. But essentially, a lot of what we're seeing here really does fit the three major theories, uh, which is the Stone of Tear, the... Um, Freudian or perhaps uh, the accepted testing chambers. So you see here behind Maya, you have an archway. That is definitely, totally, 100% an archway. There's there's no doubt in my mind that's what it is. And there's a starburst pattern kind of carved into some rough hewn stone behind it. 
Now, the starburst pattern has seven circles inside surrounding another circle. And that's going to be important here in a minute. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But one of the things I want to mention first is that particular archway, as well as that starburst pattern, looks an awful lot like this. Now, if you don't know where this is from, this is from Conan the Barbarian featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I don't know if this was totally on purpose or not. I've actually asked a question. I reached out to production and I said, was this on purpose? Did you make that background look a little bit like this? This comes from the Serpent Temple. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Robert Jordan did write a bunch of Conan books. Um, so I didn't know if it was a nod kind of to that or if it was just completely by coincidence. Either way, I thought it was really neat. But if you take a look at these archways, they are definitely archways and they're not snakes. They are very intricately carved and you can tell that these particular archways back there have a very particular pattern to them. Um, from far away, it looked like scales from that first image, but they do look like they're carved a certain way. And then you get to the sunburst here. Um, and I'm going to showcase a couple of pictures that we've already seen in the show here. Um, and I think, I think they're going to be fairly important when comparing this particular sunburst to them. All right, so the images I'm going to show you now come from the opening credits of the show. So if you skip the intro every single time you watch The Wheel of Time, you're doing yourself a disservice. It is beautiful. It is absolutely wonderfully animated, and it features what I think the One Power should look like in the show during the intro. Now, that's not exactly what we got when we watched the show for the first season, but I think that's on purpose. I think what we saw in the first season was from the point of view of the characters who are just starting to learn the One Power, and they really don't know much about it yet, was all very basic and simplistic. I think as our main characters start to get more and more experience and the viewer gets more and more experience with the One Power, we'll start to see more and more intricate weaves that look a little bit more like the intro does than what we saw in season one. Now, this is backed up a little bit by what Sarah Nakamura has said that we're going to be blown away by the, how the power looks in the second season and she thinks the fans are going to be really, really happy with it. Saying that, I think we're going to get more akin to what's happening in the intro of the show for the One Power in the second season. So, there's that. Now, we're going to take a look at this Starburst behind Maya Simonson's head. Now, the Starburst has a lot of similarities to a lot of the stuff in the opening credits of the show. You see the same Stunburst-type things happening around the head of an Aes Sedai here. Uh, inside that circle as well, you have seven smaller circles surrounding an eighth circle. To me, that tends to suggest the seven Ajas surrounding the Amaralyn. Now, I could be completely off base there, but I think that this means that this particular room is completely and unequivocally tied with the One Power, and specifically the White Tower. That isn't to say that the Stone and Tear, or perhaps Royan, isn't an option, but I am saying that so far, just by looking at this, I would think that we're looking at more of the White Tower than anywhere else in the world. You look at some of these other images in the intro, and they all seem to have the same thing. The halos surrounding the ice dies that are, you know, embracing the one power. There's a lot of that sunburst happening there. Um, very intricate, very cool little designs, sort of like what we're seeing on the background behind Maya's head. All right, so we've covered pretty much all the information we've seen in the background, but I want to reiterate what Rafe said earlier on in the video. He did say that we're going to see lots of blood, lots of water, and a ton of costume changes. So we got to try to fit one of those three spots, and it could be, we could be completely wrong, it could be a fourth spot or fifth spot that we don't know about, but we're, we're focusing on the three biggest theories in the fandom right now that fits everything we've talked about as well as what Rafe had said. So I'll start with Roydian. Now, Roydian fits some of it, so Roydian definitely has ties with one power. And here's where we get into that deep, book spoiler warning that I talked about. I don't want to ruin too much for anybody who hasn't read the full series who's watched the video this far. If you have, if you don't worry about spoilers, don't worry about it. But if you do worry about spoilers, this is your last chance. All right. Hopefully, if you're worried you're gone at this point. Um, so the Jedi'il definitely 100% have ties to the Aes Sedai because they did serve them during the Age of Legends. However, they're not modern Aes Sedai. They don't have the Seven Ajas as well as the Amarlin, so... If you look at me being correct about that sunburst, likely isn't going to be Roydian. But that's only if I'm right about that. It could just be a really cool little thing on the wall. It could be something that indicates the one power in another way we haven't talked about. I don't really know. Or they could be changing it that the Aes Sedai have always had the Seven Ajas and an Amarlin. It hasn't been exactly the way it was in the books. So there is that. We're talking about lots of blood. There were certainly a couple of attacks in Roydian that did happen. The Dark Hounds uh, come to mind. So... That's a possibility. Um, Rafe mentioned lots of water. Now, 
At one point, Ran does reach deep within the bowels of the Earth and pull up water, and it kind of fills in a mini lake at Roydian. That fits there as well. Costume changes, though. I don't see costume changes really fitting in Roydian unless you count Matt fighting naked in the books, which is a possibility, I guess. But I can't see there being a ton of costume changes here. Uh, maybe, if he's referring to Avienda going into a Wise One's garb, that's quite possible. But that doesn't really account for a ton of costume changes. So, for me, Roydian is probably the weakest of the three. The only real big evidence we have here that, that could be Roydian is the fact they introduced Bane and Chiad and reintroduced Avienda in this particular room on this particular set. It could be that they were there that day, they were filming or getting ready to film in that set. Or it could be that this is Roydian and the Aiel are home in the waste and they did that on purpose. So it's a possibility, but not one that I'm super in love with. So we'll put this one as my third favorite choice. Second favorite choice for this would be the Stone of Tear. Now, this could be possible because in the Stone of Tear, there are multiple columns around Kalimdor. Now, these aren't columns. These look like archways in the background, but there could be some creative liberties here, and these could be the columns that, that they're talking about in the book series. Um, Tyr has, and has for a long time, especially the Stony Tyr, great ties to the One Power and the fact that they don't really like women channeling, they don't like anything to do with One Power, and they don't like anything to do with objects of power, so they collect anything and everything that could be an object of power and jam it in the storerooms. Uh, and they also bundle anybody off who can channel right away out of the country to the White Tower because they don't want them in Tyr. So it's entirely possible that within this chamber, that houses Kalendor, you see carved reliefs in the wall that represent the White Tower or the One Power. Totally possible. But again, maybe not so likely. So there's that. Now the Aiel being there makes total sense if that's a thing, because they were there when the stone fell. Um, when the people of the dragon come to the stone, the stone falls, and that's one of the prophecies of the dragon. So again, that's a possibility. Now we're into what Rafe said. Lots of blood? Totally. There was a huge battle for the Stone of Tear. There would be a ton of blood here. I can totally see that. A lot of water. This one is where we get a little bit iffy. I don't see much water in this chamber unless we're talking about when Ram was fighting Ashamiel and going through the different spots in Teleran Rioid. Uh, there are spots within that fight where he could pull away all the air in the room, fill the room with water, different things like that. That is a possibility. So maybe. And then we're down to costume changes. That's a little bit more of a possibility here as well, because if Rand is fighting a Shamael here within the stone, then maybe, just maybe, he's going through Talaran Rioid and he's changing his the way he looks. The Shamael's changing the way he looks a whole bunch. It's possible. Again, I don't think much of this is very likely, so I don't really like Tyr as a choice. That's why it's my second choice. Now we get into my favorite choice, and that's the accepted chambers, where they take the testing for accepted. Now in the books, it's basically described as silvery arches. These archways in the back seem to be carved from stone. They could be considered silvery, or perhaps it could be silvery with a little bit of post, or that could be completely left out. The um, carved things in the wall make total sense if it's the White Tower, because if I'm right about it, and it's the seven ashes around the Amberlin, then quite likely they would be in the tower. And again, the way the background looks with the rough hewn stone as well as the worked stone could be the bowels of the tower, which is where the accepted testing chamber is. Totally possible, totally fits my image of what the accepted testing chamber looked like. That's why I was really excited when I seen this. The three Aiel being there, that's the only thing that I don't think fits so far. Um, they could have just been on set that day filming or near the set, and that's how they introduced them. Um, but they really don't have much to do with the accepted testing as as far as I can remember from the book series. Um, so I, I think they're a little bit out of place there. Now we got to talk about what Rafe said. Blood totally makes sense because when they go through the test for the accepted, they're going through a bunch of what are essentially mirror worlds um, or like mirror worlds, I should say, before somebody comes at me in the comments and say they're not. They're like them. It's the easiest way to describe them. Uh, and there's a lot of battles. There's a lot of different things going on there. Um, a lot of blood, a lot of tears, uh, a lot of water, in, insofar as they could see all of those things within these different worlds. Um, but in the chamber itself, we don't really see much of that inside the chamber. Other than when they're washed clean and they pour the water over them, when the accepted test is done, there's water there. 
So maybe they come out bloody from their time within the accepted test, they get washed clean, wipe the water poured over them, and then become accepted. Totally possible that way as well. So again, that's me trying to fit things into my favorite choice, but I still like accepted testing chamber as the absolute best out of the three options. Now, here's the fun part. Let me know in the comments down below what you folks think. Do you think it's Roydian? Do you think it's the Stone of Tear? Do you think it's the accepted testing chamber? Or do you think it's something completely different? Was it convincing enough? Or am I totally out to lunch and completely wrong? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Either way, thank you so very much for sticking with us here to the very end. And here's to many more.